Mini episode 31 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by DOU Productions, delivering coverage of sports and pop culture through columns, live blogs, and original videos. Follow them on the web at generationshatter.blogspot.com. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Hello, this is FDH Managing Partner Rick Morris welcoming you to one of the four Lounge mini-episodes that comprise the fifth edition of the FDH Pantheon. I am joined by FDH Lounge dignitaries Tim Faust and Kyle Ross. The FDH Pantheon is our celebration of the best of the best from all walks of life. These mini-episodes also bring our total amount of FDH Lounge programming to 500 hours over the course of the show's history, dating back to January 14, 2007. Members of the FDH Lounge Pantheon are voted in by the FDH Academy of Arts and Sciences, which is comprised of the FDH Lounge dignitaries and other advisors and supporters of FDH. Here are the members of the Pantheon. The first class inducted on June 20, 2008, is as follows. Best President, Ronald Reagan. Best Country Other Than the U.S., Canada. Best Motion Picture, The Godfather. Best Thespian, Kevin Costner. Best Female Bombshell, Raquel Welch. Best Musical Performer or Group, Bon Jovi. Best TV Show, All in the Family. Best TV or Movie Cartoon Character, Bugs Bunny. Best Comic Book Character, Superman. Best Pro Wrestler, Ric Flair. Best Basketball Player, Michael Jordan. Best Football Player, Jim Brown. Best Race Car Driver from any circuit, Richard Petty. Best Hockey Player, Wayne Gretzky. Best Baseball Pitcher, Nolan Ryan. Best Baseball Hitter, Babe Ruth. Personally, I should note before I go any further that I do not stand behind the results of the voting. Like all of the voters, I cast a vote for some of the winners, and in some cases, I'm quite horrified by how the results manifested themselves. But discussion and controversy are all part of the fun of the Pantheon. The second class, inducted on July 18, 2009, is as follows. Best Pro Sports Coach or Manager, Paul Brown. Best Sporting Event, the Super Bowl. Best Fantasy Sport, Football. Best Olympic Sport, Hockey. Best Sportscaster Play-by-Play, Vin Scully. Best Sportscaster Color Commentator, John Madden. Best Sports Movie, Bull Durham. Best Movie Villain, Joker, the Heath Ledger version. Best Pro Wrestling Manager, Bobby Heenan. Best Video Game, Non-Sports, Grand Theft Auto. Best Musical Guilty Pleasure, Phil Collins' Air Drum Solo to In the Air Tonight. Best Non-U.S. City, Toronto. Best U.S. City, New York City. Best Political Scandal, Watergate. Best Seinfeld Episode, The Soup Nazi. Best TV Commercial Character, Mr. Whipple. The third class, inducted February 17, 2010, is as follows. Best Sports Writer, Terry Pluto. Best Underappreciated Athlete, Kenny Lofton. Best Heavyweight Boxer, Muhammad Ali. Best Non-Heavyweight Boxer, Sugar Ray Leonard. Best MMA Competitor, Chuck Liddell. Best Single Sporting Event or Game Ever, Miracle on Ice. Best Sports General Manager or Executive, Bill Polian. Best Sports Stadium or Arena, Wrigley Field. Best Sports Video Game, Madden Football. Best Pro Wrestling Tag Team, The Road Warriors. Best Late Night Talk Show Host, Johnny Carson. Best TV Drama or Comedy Character, Cosmo Kramer. Best Foreign Cuisine, Italian. Best Comedian, Richard Pryor. Best Live Musical Performer, Bruce Springsteen. Best Sandwich, Corned Beef Sandwich from Goodman's Sandwich Inn in Cleveland. And the fourth class of the Pantheon, inducted November 10th, 2010, is as follows. The Best Super Bowl, Steelers-Cardinals, Super Bowl 43. Best Comeback Game, regardless of sport, Bills-Oilers, January 3rd, 1993, playoff game. Best Single Season Pro Team, regardless of sport, 1995-96, Chicago Bulls. Best Pro Franchise, regardless of sport, New York Yankees. Best College Coach, regardless of sport, Mike Krzyzewski. Best Sports Tradition, Handshake Line after a Stanley Cup Playoff Series. Best College Football Program, Ohio State. Best Genre of Motorsports, the Sprint Cup. Best Pro Wrestling Monster Bad Guy, The Undertaker. Best Movie Franchise, combining original and sequels, 
Star Wars, Best Innovative TV Series 24, Best Song, Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin, Best Continent, North America, Best Fast Food Meal or Sandwich, Mr. Hero Cheeseburger, Best American Tradition, Independence Day, Best Animal or Fish in a Zoo or Aquarium, Dolphin. Additionally, we recognize what we call the Pantheon within the Pantheon. It consists of inductees who won their category with more than 50% of the total vote. They are as follows. From the second class of inductees, football as best fantasy sport. From the third class of inductees, Madden as best sports video game and Muhammad Ali as best heavyweight boxer. From the fourth class of inductees, North America as best continent. John Madden is the only two-time inductee of the Pantheon, winning for best color commentator and best sports video game. We hope you enjoy our Pantheon broadcasts as much as we enjoy bringing them to you. In the event of any ties in the balloting, they will be broken on the air by our dignitaries hosting the show. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to induct the fifth class of the FDH Pantheon. Okay, it's the last of our four segments here for the fifth edition of the FDH Lounge Pantheon. Rick Morris, Tim Faust, Kyle Ross, we've got the three more non-sports ones to go here. Uh, as, I, as I said before, we did uh, the last segment of non-sports. Uh, these are truly, truly disparate all over the place. Best decade of music, best snack food, and best American success story. Only in the FDH Lounge can you get that kind of variety here. For best decade of music, you had some really interesting ones here. Uh, Chris Galloway, uh, fellow uh, original FDH Lounge dignitary, along with uh, Tim and myself, how I said that he always cast some wacky votes here. Chris was a little closer to the mainstream on his votes. Aside from this category, this category, he chose the 1920s for the best decade of music. So, okay. Uh, from there, four votes to the 90s. I might have thought that the 90s uh, might have done a little bit better out of this. There were 26 total votes cast in this category. Uh, out of uh, 27 total. Actually, no, I'm sorry, uh, there were 27 uh, votes cast here, so everybody voted in this one. This is one of the only ones where everybody voted. Four votes for the 90s. Might have thought they would have done a little bit better than that. Fine decade. Five votes, and you're going to put this one over because you voted for it. Five votes for the 60s. So you you only, your two favorite ones were only third and fourth place, Kyle Ross. Well, that's silly. (laughs) But not as silly as the 20s getting a vote. Okay. I'm just going to let you, because I already know what happened. Galloway and his flappers. (laughs) Yes, yes. Because I... I paid for my uh, FDH premium access, and I got the spoiler alert on this yeah. one. So I'm just going to wait to go off and tell right. the people. All right. Uh, there were eight votes for the next one. The one that I voted for, I am shocked that it did this well. The, there were a couple of these ones where I voted for them, like nobody else is really going to pay attention to this. This one almost won. There were eight votes for the 70s. And I, I, I really was shocked that it did as well as that. But, again, for variety, for all different kinds of music, and as I've gotten older, yeah, and, and part of it is, I, I, part of me's become that guy where as I've gotten older, I like some of the singer-songwriter crap I might have disdained in my youth. So I can appreciate the variety for what it is. I mean, they had just about everything in the 70s, top to bottom. Yeah, I'm, 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 I think 70s is my second choice because I think I voted for the winner. Yeah, I mean, you know, as I've gotten older, you know, I, we, we've covered previously on the show my love of ABBA. And uh, we start getting into, uh, like, when I was younger, I mean, ain't no way I would have busted out a little bit of Gordon Lightfoot, but you know, I'm, I'm okay with that now. So I, and now that I'm like a true full-spectrum kind of a guy, that's why I love the 70s. The 70s had it all. I can't believe it was as strong as it was. The winner with 10 votes, including the one for Tim Faust here, which is going to set it up nicely for Kyle's rant, the winner, the 1980s. And the one thing I'll say about that, I didn't... W- I mean, I grew up in the 80s, and I we hated all did. it. Yeah, I hated it. Well, it's, like, Tim and I are both, you know, some years older than you. Mm-hmm. So, but it was, I mean, for me, that was like high school years and everything. But it was a thing where, like, I hated, like, the pop music of the time. But, it, so, like, all I basically liked was, you know, some of the, you know, more commercial metal of the day. But essentially, I've made my peace with a lot of it, and, and when we did the, uh, the segment on the show previously, the worst of the worst of Rick's iPod, I was actually recapping uh, the one time that uh, Nate Noy, our good friend, the one time he was in town, I mean, he and I, riding down the street in my car, had the iPod on, actually rocking out to 
wake me up before you go-go. I never would have believed that in the 80s, but I've made my peace with it, Tim. I've made my peace with that music. And I've, I've always been a pop 80s guy. Okay. So I'm still good with the pop 80s. Okay. I still, I still stream it on uh, my Pandora. Okay. It's, and I just, it's 80s music. Kyle's, Kyle's <laughs> Head disgust. <in> hand. <laughs> Kyle's disgust is just making me laugh. I'm about to choke looking Wait, at what'd you mind. vote for? He voted for the 60s. The 60s? Yeah. I'm, I'm, that'd probably be my third favorite. You cannot, Ricky. <laughs> Drive in a car yeah. with another man listening to Wham. We're, we're you, secure. You, you, I don't that, care. Secure in our heterosexuality. Hey, and, 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 yeah. <laughs> obviously. That's the ultimate you security can't do, right there. I'm not even talking about it. I'm just talking about from a musical perspective, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. I mean, okay. Listen to me being defensive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike Piazza, by the way. <laughs> Would you like to call a press conference, Mike? Yes. <laughs> the first thing I'd like to say is I'm not gay. <laughs> All right. I, okay. I, I think Regain the 80s my composure. Okay. I think the 80s should have gotten last. Well, I really do because I'm like in the 20s. <laughs> okay, you're right. Okay, okay, you're right. No. Behind, now, come on. Chris I'm like Galloway you. Away in his bathtub shin. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm. I'm like you, where it's like you know, like you said, I'm a little younger. So like yeah. that was not my high school years. That was. Like my elementary, but I got into music, you know, and we don't talk as much music as we do other things, Ricky, on the show mm. with me. But I, I mean, I'm a huge, huge music fan. And I mean, all I was really into was your Guns N' Roses, your mom. I, I loathed and still do to this day the pop of that era. Right. Like, I, I, like, I mean, that. I loathe pop. I mean, it's kind of funny, too, that the last decade got no votes, correct? Yeah, no votes, no votes for the aughts, aughts. as it were. Yeah, which is kind of interesting to me because, like, music's very cyclical. And not even the guy that voted for Lance Bergman. He didn't. Yeah. That's, <laughs> well, the, the thing. What's funny no is prisoner of the moment. <laughs> what's funny is the last couple of years have been generally pretty bad. I, there was a there was like you know the early part of the decade I thought was okay with like 2002 to 2004. One, I got off here. I got to talk to you about something that I've I've done, Ricky. That would make a good show. Good. But um, the 80s. I just think to me, I just don't understand like how like. With these hipster groups here, let's bring this full circle okay. so I can just bash everything I don't okay. like. I remember when I was going into high school and in middle school, like the synthesizer was the most, like everyone came to agreement this was the most awful thing to ever happen to music. It's and that's just how t- I felt then, and, and now I don't know. Maybe I'm a hipster see, who likes it ironically. See, I, I mean, still feel that way. Okay. I felt that way too. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that did, you know, Flock of Seagulls did suck, man, you know? Yeah. And like, and it's to me, it's like, it's coming back, and, he's like, and it's like, why? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I like to me the eight like the I can't great, what are the great it. No, albums of the eighties? I don't know. Like for me, like I'm kind of like an album snot. Like I look at things okay. like that, and to me, I don't. know, The sixties and nineties, I think, are pretty close. The nineties had its moments, man. Like the middle part of that decade was about as hot as any period in the history of music. The, I thought the one that I love, and and I always take a lot of crap for this. That uh, out, out of all of Springsteen's ones, my favorite album of his, is Tunnel of Love. The, the post-divorce album, <laughs> this this bleak post-divorce album. I don't know. I love How it. How is that I, your I favorite love, Springsteen that's my album? Fa- I don't know. I don't know, but I'm that know. guy. I love Springsteen. I don't know if that's in my top ten. Well, my, my favorite Rush album is Hold Your Fire. I, I'm notorious for liking the the ones that other people are just like, what? What? How is that your favorite? I don't know. I'm that guy. I, but, I assume you own a copy of Goat's Head Soup as well. <laughs> I'd have to look through the old yeah. uh, cassette collection, yeah. which, by the way, I still own. The, the interesting thing, like, to me, like, the best period of music, though, it, yeah. it, and we talked about this, it's not a clean decade. It would be mm-hmm. late 60s to early 70s, because 70s is okay, but, like, I... I really dislike the late 70s okay you know, like because i don't i i love disco and i yeah. didn't really like okay. punk well, but the was, early I, part of the 70s was great like 70 to like 73 and then everyone died and then it got kind of stinky there there was, in the middle you know but that was 70s like 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 uh, how would you look at you know, like, like the quintessential the two quintessential 70 70- a group uh, zeppelin and pink floyd well, are the two I, best groups of the uh, 70s where, where would you put the eagles because i love the eagles I don't. Not I don't. Near, I, I don't like the. Eagles. I don't love their cocktail band reunion of the nineties. <laughs> I don't love that. I, I don't. Uh, Life in the fast lanes. I, I don't know. To me, it's like Hotel California when that stuff. comes on. It's like yeah, like I start twitching. I, I don't. I'm not a huge Eagles fan. I, I, I just don't like Don Henley. Okay, I, I can understand that. He is an annoying hippie. I can understand that. <laughs> well, <laughs> if in that case, I should like him probably, right? Yeah. The, the one thing I want to, the point I want to make about the aughts, too, we talked about this, we just touched on it briefly. I find this very interesting. When we did our look back at the end of the last decade, w- looking at, at, at things, we, there were a lot of pop culture things we looked at. The one thing we talked about musically 
this was very, very noteworthy to me. That I don't know that there was ever a, a decade, you know, since the 50s, really, when, when, when music kind of got to its more modern stages, where you, you had less changes or innovations. If you look at, say, the radio and everything, from like the mid-90s, think back to like 95 with like Sheryl Crow and everything like that, that set the template for today's like chick rock stations and adult contemporary and adult alternative. And the last 15 years to me are amorphous. I actually kind of disagree. Well, and okay. this always goes on the hips. Like, Please tell me because that would be very interesting traditional, the traditional music outlets have not evolved. You're correct. But right. there's a lot of like. Think about like just online and like what you can do. Like that's. But I'm so, talking about the mainstream, though. Like, oh, the main. No, the oh, oh, I agree with you. The mainstream has not. Changed, which is an years. issue, and yeah. it's opened it up for a lot of these. You know, kind of. You know, right. we, we joke hipster outlets. Right. But, but I mean, even stuff that's like very good. Like I mean, you've got stuff. You know, like Napster and right. just like in files. I mean, you know, MP3s. Well, I don't know if iTunes. that's what you guys are saying, but I think that that's the reason why things haven't evolved because I think yeah. mainstream hasn't evolved at all because right. I think. To use your phrase, or to use your word, hipster mm -hmm. stuff is going niche and is going to the other yeah. media. Outlets. Music right now is way more niche. It, it, it go, mm -hmm. And I think this is, and this is probably a, a different discussion for a way different time because it's way. To me, pop culture in general mm -hmm. is so less, and music certainly included in this, is so less universal than it ever was. There's so many options right. now. You know, one of the things that's kind of cool, like, you know, if you get in like the indie rock and movement and stuff like that of today, is. Its biggest positive is also its biggest negative mm -hmm. in that it kind of created a lower barrier barrier of entry to get in the arena, right. so to speak. And that's good in a lot of cases. But in a lot of cases, you know, there's stuff here. It's like, oh, my right. God, this is manure, you know? Well, I was trying to think. I mean, in, in terms of the mainstream, you had emo, I'd say, roughly, what, 04 to about 06 or something. I can't think of hardly anything else that really broke out into the mainstream in the last 15 years versus in the 90s and the 80s and the 70s. Things were always changing and evolving. And, and it was, but by the same token, I, I said this at the time, and, and I, I'm grateful for this, it's easier to wall yourself off now because I couldn't wall myself off from the 80s pop that I hated. I couldn't escape Howard Jones. He was omnipresent at the time. Howard Jones is not a guy that time has softened me on. But now the Jonas Brothers... I couldn't name you a tune. Yeah, I've never heard that, of Jonas. That's what I talk about. The universe, exactly. Yeah. That's funny. Taylor with me. Swift. I know like one or two songs. Unfortunately, I don't even know that. But you, the, the ones that are omnipresent now, I, I don't listen no to those stations. And, I, it's it's. I, I like this balkanized world. I can get away it, from that crap. True. No, it's it's funny because a lot of I was a, obviously, and I'm sure you guys were too. Maybe I'm wrong, but like mm -hmm. MTV was such a, when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, was such a big part, and, and like yeah. in many ways, like a, going back to the universal thing, it kind of. You know, did okay. This is what everyone's listening to now. This is what he, there was like push it. You know, songs were being pushed. You know, to use right. that wrestling term there, Ricky, and <laughs> stuff like that. Now you don't really have that. Where I'm like you too. These groups that are popular, mm -hmm. like I look at them, like I don't know, like this. I, I don't want to know anything about this. Right. And and I can get away. I can isolate myself. I couldn't tell you a Jonas Brothers song. Like to me, yeah. Like I'm only reminded of them. Like you know, they'll play them on like the Bally stupid video. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the, the gym where I work oh, out. Oh yeah. Yeah, they'll play that. I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, that's right. These guys still exist. Like yeah. not, one of these guys isn't in rehab or something. You know, <laughs> like like I just have no like. It's just. And, like, the pop stars of the 80s, for instance, right? you knew who they were, and you knew what they were. Now it's just like, I couldn't tell you anything about them. I don't know some of these people from Adam. Yeah, yeah, and, and I like it that way. Because, like I said, Howard Jones, I couldn't get away from. These guys, I can. So uh, that's progress in the world. But having said that, the 80s, uh, I guess, scoreboard, the 80s do take the Dundee Award for uh, the best decade of music. Best snack food. This one was all over the place here. Uh I'm going I'm to jump ahead just a second here to say, uh, to talk about Chris Galloway's ballot, because he voted for ice cream. He actually got one other vote, so there's one and a half votes for it. Chris voted for one half vote for ice cream, one half vote for taco Doritos. I certainly hope he doesn't eat those together. I hope that's not a topping. Well, that's, that's, a, yeah. that, that's like pregnant lady oh, topping. I would do that. Yeah, I would, would you? I sure do that. Dip my taco Doritos in ice cream. <laughs> I actually might do that on the way home. Did you? God, how did you? Oh, that, my, my stomach kind of hurts. I dip my french fries in milkshake. Really? I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't like my food to touch. I put I put French fries on burgers sometimes, but I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't do any of that. That was, 
Are, are you sure that wasn't something you had exposure to when the twins were on the no. way? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel I kind of felt bad about having some pizza and then eating that tootsie roll. Like I didn't like that. Like I thought that was kind of wrong. Like but, wash but, it but when I did it, I was like, yeah, that's why I got grabbed another do. I was like, I gotta go. Nice. Yeah. I, I don't know what what with Galway, but it was half a vote for Taco Doritos. Working our way up here, one vote for Old London cheese curls, one for. <laughs> Snyder's Hot Buffalo Wing Pretzels. I love the specificity. Here. Yeah, I was just thinking <laughs> the same thing, too. Like, but wow. This goes back and forth, though. You know, totally specific and then totally generic. Uh, one vote for Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. One vote here. Uh, I, I, I love this one. Uh, uh, as uh, Ben Chu must have been summoning his inner three-year-old. One vote for Goldfish Crackers. One vote for... Uh, like Goldfish Crackers. Th- th- those are good, but it's just funny that uh, I would see that here. One for Three Musketeers. Got to like that. Kyle, you voted for pretzel rods. Those are love, good. Love a good rod. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That's a classic. Too. Yeah, exactly. That was I was telling you. Regardless of brand, too. By the way. Well, uh, I, I, it's interesting that uh, although you, you did go rod as yeah, opposed yes. to twist or oh, the rod is far superior nugget. to the twist, I believe. I was telling uh, Kyle the other day. I mean, this, a lot of people might find this a little bit gross, and and I haven't done this since college, but that was a big thing in our dorm. Uh, back in Athens, back in the day, the old uh, you know pretzel rods, good for dipping with your fody of malt liquor. That was always something good. Uh, and then the thing that would suck is it would break off and it would be at the bottom, and then it would be like a tequila <laughs> worm, and that was kind of gross. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. You don't want to eat a pretzel rod. That's why is there a rod at the bottom of your Colt 45? Yeah, you do not want to eat a, a pretzel rod after it's been marinating in Colt 45 for two. I hours. I love that CVS that sold <laughs> two 99. hours to drink your Colt 45. Uh, Come on, you went to OU. Two hours? I, mean, I think I meant to say two minutes <laughs> back in the day at, uh, at OU. That makes more sense. Yes. I love those 99-cent 40s they had at CVS. Those were awesome. It's King Cobra. Oh, good to know times haven't changed. Yes. <laughs> one vote for pizza. I told you that some of these were generic. Uh, but then one for Lay's potato chips as we swing back to the specific. One for Pringles potato chips. One for potato chips in general. One for Crunchy Cheetos. One for Frito-Lay Munchies. One for Fritos. One for Combos. One for Doritos Cool Ranch. One for Hostess Cupcakes. One for, this was mine, Dandy Buffalo Wing Chips. Yours was Doritos, by the way, uh, Tim, I see. And, uh, Kyle, we, we covered it. Yours was Pretzel Rods. All right, 1.5 for ice cream. We covered the Galloway accounts for the .5 of that. Two for uh, Doritos. All right, yeah, so there, there's there's the one that you were uh, part of, uh, Tim. That so got we a, don't get to pick up the Buffalo Ranch Doritos or the or the Yeah, that's funny, the though, doesn't it? Yeah, because Doritos yeah. seems like it has, like, yeah. It, it, there were a couple different uh, versions of that. Both you and uh, our, our baseball league mate, uh, Alex Slemp, the aforementioned Alex Slemp of uh, Fox Sports Ohio, uh, were the Doritos votes in the bunch here. Uh, two votes for, I was puzzled by this because I find th- these are decent, but I can't believe anyone would vote for the Snyder's of Berlin barbecue chips. Oh, those are good. I'm a barbecue chip those connoisseur, but yeah, but like I like their their uh, rippled ones better. They're, they're rippled. They, they, there's a little bit of like sweet tanginess to the rippled ones. <laughs> Listen to me discuss, discussing my barbecue chip palate. <laughs> I usually like rippled better, but in the case of the Snyder's, I'm going to go with the right. With, those with can the give me heartburn, though. I, have those ever given you heartburn? Um, I don't recall, but I'm not saying what happens after the fact. I'm okay. saying what, what they're like going down. All right. All right. Well, you, you talk about generic, and uh, there, there are some people. Some people are going to fart on this when I say that this is what the winner is, but this is what the winner is. The winner is, with three votes is popcorn. Three votes out of 26. That shows you how spread I out I want to protest this one. Popcorn. Okay. Because I think Doritos. Okay. I We've got two for generic Doritos, okay. and then we've got different well, flavors of Doritos. One so that for, should all go into the Doritos bucket. One for Doritos Cool Ranch, though. Yeah, okay. But that's, so that's that's a subset of Doritos. We, we've traditionally counted them separately. And though. we get <laughs> we get the taco. We get the half point for the taco. That Doritos is a winner. Uh, <laughs> this is a real well, Roger Maris, this is a Roger yeah, Maris situation. Yeah. Well, you, 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 you can you can protest, but by the same token, there would be three votes for potato chips because there was one for Fine. potato chips, one for Pringles, and one for uh, Lay's Fine. potato Ooh, chips. So oh, like Tim's gonna go with ones too. You got it sounds like Tim's gonna go Vern yeah. Gagne and create his own <laughs> version okay. of the world championship here. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, we'll lose respectively. Or re- 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 we'll respectfully, lose respectfully. Yes. Goodness gracious, it's late. Um. Yeah. So, so go ahead. I think the potato oh, chips is fine. We'll 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 entertain uh, for future uh, times here. Uh, 
uh, potential rules. We'll take it up with the rules committee for subsequent ones here. Like to beat uh, that but, rogues gallery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in the meantime, I'm gonna lose this one. <laughs> in the meantime, Popcorn gets the Dundee Award for the penultimate uh, one of the evening here. We go to the last one. It's American Success Story. And this is another deadlock that we've got going in, but we could be set up for a very fantastic finish, ladies and gentlemen, well, based on how this is going. We, we could be. This could be an Alcoa fantastic finish. <laughs> if you like my 1980s NBC NFL reference there, Kyle Ross. Da, 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 da. <laughs> One vote for Barack Obama. That was Kyle Ross. Oh, I knew the people involved would just froth Are you the mouth. Kidding I, me? I, well, I think that's a tremendous success story for a for a little kid born for, in Kenya to grow yeah, exactly. up to it. I mean, first of all, you got to be in the born in the U.S. Oh, don't tell this. me you're gonna. Don't tell me. Yeah, I'm yeah. <laughs> I think it, the first African American. I think that's a tremendous success story. At, uh, a biggest sellout president I'd say as well. Yeah. Top top one hundred, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> biggest American sellout success. president ever too. He gets a vote now. Now this is interesting when you talk about combining other ones here, because there will be a specific Microsoft individual that comes up later on. But there was one vote for Microsoft generically, one vote for Kurt Warner. This is all over the place. Kurt one, Warner, t- twenty-four total votes cast here. Yes, Kurt Warner got a vote from, from John Adams. Yeah, I heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Are you familiar with him? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you know that he used to work at a supermarket in Iowa? It, uh, by the way, too, and I have to say this from the last time. I think time Brenda Warner's uh, girl was much more successful than his. I was going to say, <laughs> name me the last quarterback to upgrade to a trophy wife without a divorce. Yeah. I mean, what yeah. happened there? Yeah, yeah. Who knew that just growing out her hair, Tim, was going to be enough to do it? Could you have projected that? Yeah, no, I, I Completely yeah. agree with you. There. Yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable. <laughs> Kurt Warner making a very persuasive case for monogamy and sticking it out. <laughs> Got to give him that, right? Yes. <laughs> There's always hope for the old lady. Just yeah. ask Kurt. Uh, one <laughs> vote for Andrew Carnegie. One vote for Jackie Robinson. That was mine, I think. Wasn't that it? was uh, yes, that was yours, uh, Tim. And uh, somebody who, uh, by the way, we did a, uh, a thing on the blog a couple months back, uh, Russ Cohen and I, ranking our top ten athletes of all time. I included him in there because of uh, a lot of things besides baseball, too, like track and field and football. And the guy did a lot of different well, things. Well, transcended, you know, I mean, right. that's a cultural well, thing. Yeah, yeah, you've already, I don't know yeah. if you did it just on the field. Right, right. I just did it on the field. Okay. But, yeah, you're, you're talking about the other stuff. We go from Jackie Robinson and the inspiration of that to one vote for McDonald's, uh, one, vote for, <laughs> one vote for Craig Ferguson, one vote for Dave Thomas. I take it that's the Wendy's guy and not the uh, not not the, not the guy that was like, hey, let's get some back bacon. Hey, I take it it's not that Dave Thomas. <laughs> all, all I want is some some beer, back bacon, and a quiet face to belch. Eh? Actually, yeah, that guy wouldn't even qualify for American Success Story. <laughs> he would. Uh, no, no, he would not. Either Craig Ferguson. Uh, he's a naturalized American, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah, got to give it to him for that. One vote uh, generically for uh, an American soldier. Uh, very inspirational. Thank you, uh, Bob uh, Glassman. Uh, one vote for uh, George Foreman. One vote for Google. One for Mark Zuckerberg. One for Hugh Hefner. That's a good one. One for Walt Disney. That was me. I, I can't believe Walt Disney didn't get a second vote, although a lot of people told me that they would have strongly considered that one. Two votes for Mark Cuban. Two votes for the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team, Miracle on Ice. Now we get to our tie. Out of the 24 votes cast, six were cast and evenly split between these two. Three for Bill Gates. One vote for Bill Gates came in very early. The other two came in late. All three votes for Steve Jobs came in very late, i.e. after the, man, the poor man passed away. Kyle, take it away with uh, Prisoner of the Moment. <laughs> I, I just remember when you asked me this question. Yeah. And and you and you were tap dancing. I think you had to because you were surprised. Well, yeah. not that when I was like, Steve Jobs is winning this, isn't he? And, and I don't mean to disparage the man. I mean I'm not trying to be like a cold person by any means here. But it just to me, it just seemed like that was like okay, considering what just happened. You know, the votes came in after that. Uh, there were there were a couple of votes that trickled in after he passed away. Okay, because okay. we, we've fair enough. Then. The, the 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 voting's actually been ongoing for a period of time here. Uh, all three votes came in late, and and again. So, looking at it, we have to extrapolate, but would he be in the tiebreaker if he was still alive? We have to say probably no, based on the... Yeah, that, that's my whole thing. Like, to me, evidence. yeah, that, that's kind of what I'm just saying. And that, so we look People at it that way. It. Yeah. All right, here's how we do it. And, and, and this didn't come into play with the previous one here, but in the tiebreaker, we are free to vote for anybody. I think I covered that previously, uh, that, that we weren't bound to do that. I'll go first. 
I'm going to put Miracle on Ice in the tiebreaker. Third vote for Miracle on Ice. Now, you can't vote for something you already cast a vote for. Neither of us, and none of us sitting here, had voted for either Steve Jobs or Bill Gates. So you're free to cast votes however you want. I have a hierarchy that was given to me by Nate Noy to break a tie here. It's now a three-way tie. Tim, uh, out of the three, or if there's anybody else you want to vote for, uh, actually, and Mark Cuban's got two votes also, so uh, a vote for you Cuban. You threw a wrench into it by saying I could vote for Cuban. Because I was already, I mean, <laughs> no disrespect, Kyle, but I, I, I'm, I, I think Steve Jobs is a, a, a good success story. And, oh, and I'm if not you look at, that. If you look at the whole gamut, you know, I, I think, um, you know, the fact that, you know, the you know the education part of it, the fact that he got fired from the company, and then he came back to the company. I, I, I we don't have to go over. They it, I guess, floundered but, without him. Value over replacement player. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I, I don't know. I mean, given I guess my original thought of using the two choices, Gates, Jobs, I'm going to go Jobs. Okay. And I'm going to stick with. Well, it. entertainment as well as the computing too. When you when you look at the music industry over the last decade and it going five, digital. Five industries. Yeah. He yeah. revolutionized or, or, or significantly yeah. changed five different industries. Yeah, and I've always been the world's biggest miracle on ice, Mark, but, yeah, I can't argue with anything you said there, and I'm perfectly and, and, at peace. And does, does he have special light because of his, of, of his recent passing? A- absolutely. I'm not going to argue that, but timing, yeah. timing is a lot of things, yeah. so I'm going to stick with it. Okay. All right, Kyle, it's your, uh, it's your vote here. And all I can say is, because I know what Nate's thing is, I'm just going to tell you, vote your conscience. You, you might as well just vote. Do your I conscience. have to vote now? Because I don't. This is really hard. Vote your conscience. This is really. Because I, I feel that there's some great success story that wasn't voted for. Well, vote your conscience. Put out. You, you can vote for whoever you want to vote for on the second ballot here. We, we never limited that, so we're not going to start limiting it now. So you, you can vote for whoever. Anybody that wasn't named that you feel should be in here. We're going to have a subsequent write up of this. We've got our Oprah. webcast. Where was Oprah? Oprah was not in here. Uh, the uh, if if we're to take into a, if we're going to be prisoner of the moment, that might be a reason not to vote for her. <laughs> that, that channel's not doing so well, buddy. <laughs> but that's just so. There's there's one thought. <laughs> that was you know. I just thought I'd throw that at you. Uh, all right. Well, you, you you can think about this. If there's anybody else uh, that didn't make it, uh, certainly uh, when, when you look at. Uh, a Terry Bolia, for example, <laughs> that might be somebody. I knew I could get you on that one there. <laughs> Herb Abrams. Yeah, yeah Herb Abrams. Oh. Eddie from Harpo's. Yes. <laughs> oh, a fine American, actually. Yes, yes, yes. I love Eddie. Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there, were, there were some great ones that uh, were, were named and, and, and some that were not. And... Uh, you, you can uh, I'm really milking this, aren't I? I'm sorry, I can't. As I like having the last draft pick. Yeah, yeah. As, as I forget like that I'm on the radio. Later. Um, you could always, uh, you could always make it a second vote for Walt Disney. I, I, I thought about that. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of did too. That's kind that. of a good one. You know what? I'm going to go Walt Disney. Okay. All right. Yeah, seeing as how uh, his forebears now own your beloved ESPN, what better reason Oh, he to wins, do that? of course. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. It's Walt Disney. Yes. If I would have told you that three minutes ago, we could have settled it. Yeah. So, all right. Well, the hierarchy from Nate, I'll put it out there. He had given it to me because uh, I had told him I was going to go Miracle on Ice. If it, had been a, if it had been a three-way tie, he would have voted for Miracle on Ice. But between Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, he would have gone for Steve Jobs. However, it is not a tie. Tim, you broke the tie, and we raise the Dundee Award here to Steve Jobs. So that uh, that concludes uh, this. Uh, gentlemen, again, I want to thank you uh, tonight here. For, uh, we, we go through the 12 categories, and we'll have this uh, up on the site here. A tremendous way to get us the 500 hours of the FDH Lounge. And, uh, Tim, very fitting because you were there for the very first one along with me. So uh, thank you to uh, both of you for, uh, for being here for us. And, actually, Kyle, you were there. Just prior to the first yes, hour. Yes, I was going to say, I just I, 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 I gave way, I believe. Submission. Yes, I gave way to the very first yes, hour. Yes, you did. Fact. Yes, you did. You, you promoted it. You were, you were the very first thing to promote uh, the lounge yes. uh, on there at, the, at, at our former stomping grounds uh, here at the network. So uh, thank you both very much. And uh, we'll be doing another Pantheon here at some point in 2012, hopefully not uh, too late into the year. All right.